Hello, hello. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. My name is Chastity, aka Lunar Beams. I'm a psychic medium and astrologer, and I really enjoy this type of video. Like I said, it's a uh, real chill and easy for me to do i can get more information out to you guys if you like it please let me know down below i'll keep putting more out so like i said i got a lot to say but today i want to talk about universal laws so we all hear of universal laws and we mainly hear of one type and that is the universal law of attraction well you know i didn't really know a whole lot about it but i picked up this handy dandy book by Kim Russo, uh, she is another psychic medium. She's been in TV shows um, like the, what's it called? A Haunting of, which I really enjoy. I admire her. I look up to her. She has a successful business. Her wait list is probably two years long, but there's a reason because she's awesome. So what I'll be doing today is I will be reading a little excerpt from her book called Your Soul's Purpose, Learn How to Access the Light Within. I believe this is the second book she wrote, <clears throat> excuse me, and she also has her first book, which I'll get the name for you after I read all this because it just slipped my mind, of course. I know the name of it, but you know how that goes. Anyways, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and begin to read this. It's not very long, but like I said, there's more than what everybody thought. Um, and there's probably really more than this, to be honest. But she covers nine different ones. It's just a good little overview. And I'll go ahead and get started. So... Universal Laws. Before we go forward, I want to speak about some of the laws that govern the universe. And since we are a part of the universe, these laws certainly apply to each and every one of us. I'm not referring to earthly laws, such as ones that enforce wearing your seatbelt when you drive, though I highly recommend wearing one. <laughs> I'm talking about laws that were created by the God Force the moment he created the universe. They are laws that always have always been intact and will always be intact in order to keep the system running in a way that the TGF intended. So if she says TGF, she's talking about the God Force. That's what she calls basically God, the God Force. The universal laws, also called spiritual laws, are those uh, inflatable bumpers that put in blowing bowling lanes for kids. They keep the ball rolling in the right direction. For us, for souls, they keep moving towards the light <clears throat> towards the light towards the higher purpose and towards the god force which is within all of us without these universal laws souls would be spinning out of control like a bowling ball rolling across a, ba a blacktop with nothing to stop it but a random but the random first thing it hits these laws create balance and work against chaos they are real they are as real as the universe itself and cannot be denied or ignored even when your life is turned upside down and you can't see how you will get out from under, these universal laws are constantly in motion, working behind the scenes to find the most perfect solution for any dilemma you may have. Recognizing these laws can only assist you in reaching towards the divine within you. These laws will guide you as you navigate the way to know yourself and to understand yourself and your soul and the extensions of the God force. All spiritual laws are important, but I am only mentioning the ones that pertain to the work you'll be doing throughout this book. I'm going to pause there for a second. Get the, If you don't have her books and you're interested in this kind of stuff, they are very enlightening. I learned a lot from her. Like I said, I highly respect her. Shout out to her. I give her all credit for this. This is nothing for me. Uh, something different than I wanted to do, but yeah, she's great. Let's see. All right. These laws are like a well-orchestrated symphony, perfectly synced. When we understand and apply these laws, as we reach towards our soul's purpose, we too will sync with the universe. Imagine the beautiful music you'll make when your soul is fully aligned and in tuned in with the universe. Before you read through the laws, mark this page with a bookmark sticky note. Okay, so this is basically saying, because I've got this on Kindle, uh, I've really wish I'd have got her book and I still may but anyways each of these laws will come up in later chapters when they do you may want to look back and read them again all right so before I start on the first one 
remember what I was saying if you caught my last video about you know working with fear and the law of attraction well this will go a lot deeper into stuff like that and cover a lot of other stuff and if you haven't checked out my last video and you are interested in stuff of the such like this you really should um, a lot of people really enjoyed it I really enjoyed making it so I guess we'll go ahead and get started the first universal law the law of divine oneness everything is connected to everything else each breath we take changes the universe we are in connection uh, and what we're in connection with remember this when with each act you take and each decision you make for it has the power to change the world so that's a big one we are all one um this is something that i i mean i've read but it's not really something that i felt until i was a little deeper in my connection and really started meditating and spirit started showing me a lot of visions about how we are connected as one and the way spirit explained this to me they gave me like a map and imagine yourself as a large circle and then off of yourself or your circle is, is little shooting arrows and off of those shooting arrow, arrows are different size circles. And those are the different people in your life and what they mean to you. Now, it sounds kind of weird, but what I'm saying is how much they're in your life, how important they are to you. And then off of those circles are more branches connecting more dots. And it's infinite. It's, it's literally like the stars in the sky. So that's how it was explained to me when I first really got in, you know, was getting into this. It was probably a year and a half, well, two years ago now. And that's just one example of this universal law for me. The second is the law of love. In the beginning, God showed his love by creating man and woman. He later showed his love by allowing his son, ascended Jesus, to come to earth to demonstrate divinity through unconditional love and compassion. That was the greatest display of love ever made. All of us are made of love and are capable of love as great as God's. When you love God with all your heart, you love yourself and each other. The law of love is the highest law of them all. Love transcends suffering and bypasses the physical law of limitation. Our soul needs love like a plant needs water. We need to embrace love to live our most authentic life. And like an astronaut f uh, focuses on the moon as his final destination, so too must we strive and focus on the power of unconditional love as our final destination. Love saves. Love heals. Love is everyone's true heritage of infinite possibilities and, external, and eternal joy. Love is the medium for all miracles. So we all talk about love and light, everybody. This is, you know, this is the term you hear in the community. And love just, it goes deeper even than her words. It's so important. Even when you hear, for example, whether you believe this or not, if you hear people working with spirit boxes and someone actually connects with spirit, you'll hear these divine spirits talk about love depending on who you're connecting with. You know, you could be connecting with an earthbound spirit, but if you're connecting with higher benevolent beings, their focus is on love. So makes perfect sense to me. Um, three, the law of balance. Each movement you take, each time you act in any way, your motion ripples through the universe and affects everything that is. If what you do throws off the weight of the universe. If it throws off the weight of your family or your job or your friends or vacation, the universe adjusts and rebalances. Another way to think of it is for every action, there is a reaction, whether you like it or not. Some people call this karma, which is the physical manifestation of the law of balance based on a person's free will choice. Most people, however, think of karma as a personal form of punishment serving as paycheck uh, as a payback for something awful they did in the past but karma isn't personal it's simply the scale of the universe adjusting and readjusting for every tilt and bounce until harmonious balance is achieved the one thing to keep in mind the law of balance is continuously at work on behalf of your soul even when you depart the physical world your soul is bound by this law no matter what dimension you are vibrating in this is good news because we have many chances to balance out our karma or our actions so something inter interesting that i uh, 
was listening to last night from another podcast from, I um, can't remember her name off the top of my head. I'm horrible with names, y'all. Just forgive me. Anyway, she was talking about like karmatic debt and maybe that's one reason that you know we reincarnate if that's what you believe that was one of the hardest things for me to kind of wrap my head around but I'm slowly getting used to the fact that yes I do believe we reincarnate um to some degree do I believe uh, it's our whole soul that reincarnates I'm not sure about that I have an interesting theory about that I may uh dive into later so hold that thought but anyways, yeah, this is speaking of that um, karma and karmatic debt or, you know, the law of balance, basically. Number four, the law of vibration. Everything in the universe is made of atoms. Every atom is continuously in motion and vibrates. Thoughts vibrate. Feelings vibrate. Words vibrate. And emotions vibrate. This is so, so, so true. Since there is nothing that can't be reduced to atoms there is nothing that is not vibrating as you read this book you will learn about increasing the energy inside of you also known as your vibration the ultimate goal is to harmonize your vibration with the light of the god force sit back and watch magic happen this is so true you know vibration is a big way and has something has big things to do with how we connect with our gods if your vibration's very low, meaning maybe you're really down in a bad place, or if you're just, you know, kind of a quote-unquote shitty person sometimes, or you do shitty things, your vibration will remain low. And that goes into other vib um, other laws of the universe as well. So, well, I guess we'll move forward with number five, the law of resistance. Another important one to really understand. Resistance is opposite of surrender. And surrender, and this is for me, and surrendering is something super important when it comes to going with the flow of the universe. Okay, so we'll start over. The law of resistance. Resistance is opposite of surrender. People think that when they resist something, they are staying away from it. The opposite is true. Whatever you resist will certainly persist. Resistance is a power and energy that pulls in the very thing you wish to repel. Think of it this way. If someone says, don't think of cute kittens, what do you think of? Cute kittens, of course. Kim has a really cute uh, way of explaining things. <laughs> That's the law of resistance. So the more you, let's say like, there's somebody you just really don't get along with for whatever reason that may be in life. And you're just like, I just never want to be around that person ever again. I just do pushing and pushing energetically. So those thoughts and everything about your being is just pushing that person away. Well, guess what? You see that person like later on that week at some point, you know, everybody's had something associated with that. What I just gave an example of, and that's a good uh, example for me, at least for the law of resistance. All right, we're at number six out of nine in the book. Six, the law of motion. This is this one is hard for humans in our three-dimensional bodies to accept. It is, it's the law that everything changes, no matter what. You can't stop it. Trying to stop change is simply engaging in a losing battle of resistance. When you accept that everything changes continuously, you can flow. In fact, the only way through the law of motion is to go with the flow. Now that for me relates back to the law of resistance. So you sometimes in life, you just kind of have to let things happen. Uh, I guess I could say back <laughs> when I was 20, you know, I had to have everything perfect. Perfect. I was really stuck in the whole like, you know, finish high school, go to college, get a job get married, buy a house, have some kids. And you know what? I did it all in that order. And I got a real big mix up, you know, later in life and realized that none of that really, nothing has to be that way. Um, that's kind of the issue with society and what we're all called in and what possibly will very well be our demise, but uh, <laughs> not trying to get too off subject. But the point is you have to kind of go with the flow when things aren't going the way you want. You cannot control every aspect of your life as much as you like to think you can and as much as you feel like you succeed you will always have a wrench thrown right in your garden in the way of your hoe as you try to till your garden to let it grow in reference to planting seeds and manifestation 
Y'all were wondering where I was going with that, right? <laughs> All right. Number seven, the law of attraction. So here's the popular one. Everybody knows about this. We, you know, as much as we think we can. Anyways, the law of attraction. This law appears many times in this book. One, once it's pointed out to you, you will, you won't be able not to see it in your life every day. The law of attraction says that like uh, likes attract likes low frequent frequencies attract other low frequencies good attracts good evil attracts evil it's like water the way drops of water draws towards each other create a bigger drop since the universe does not discriminate when delivering the goods it only responds by what it hears through the messages you are constantly generating in your mind pause there yes your thoughts are energy we are energy your thoughts can make stuff happen. It is one of the most powerful tools you have. So when you feel like you're trapped in your mind, you're and you know you're never trapped in your mind. Your thoughts are always projecting out, and that is like the first key to manifestation. People talk about manifestation all the time, and it's it really does work. But anyways, I'll get back to it. Let's see, be mindful or be careful of your thoughts because they become things, absolutely. This law implies if you want more love in your life, you must feel love, give love, receive love, and be love. And I'd add love yourself too. If you want more peace in your life, you must first master being peaceful. I can agree with that. All right, moving on to number eight, the law of polarity. This law states everything in nature is dual, has an opposite counterpart, or is part of the same continuum, and is always connected to its whole. If you remember what you've learned in science class, all things in the universe are either negatively or positively charged. This includes everything from an atom to a plant to a human, and human etc., the male atom is positively charged and the female atom is negatively charged. Not negative as in emotions, but rather negative in, in the nucleus. Therefore, all forms of creation are formed by joining both male and female energy. In the human body, we can find female energy inside of a male and vice versa in female. If we use the example of a thermometer, you can see two extreme temperatures, hot and cold, and some, and some were in the middle were, is where we can find warm. We see the polarity here in two opposite temperatures of hot and cold. The warm temperature is where you can see the law of balance. So reverting back to the law of balance. So in order for us to understand one thing, we must also understand its opposite. We can see the light without seeing its polar opposite, the darkness. We can't know joy without knowing anguish. In understanding the law of polarity, we have to understand that nothing is simple as, sim as a single side. The law of polarity is a fundamental law, and when it is put in motion, it opens up a space to create, manifest, achieve, balance, and practice gratitude. Part of being an involved soul is the ability to see past superficial superficiality of one side so as to embrace the whole. For me, this speaks a lot about the polarity. It speaks a lot about perspective, which is something I mentioned in my last video. And how important it is to understand others' perspectives, to put yourself in someone else's shoes, because it's easy for our ego to take over and only understand what we experience, what we've experienced. Uh, this speaks very much to this. Also, stands out to me: you can't see the light without seeing its polar opposite, the darkness. I say that about myself all the time. I never would be able to be where I'm at without seeing darkness, without being consumed by darkness, or being a dark, dark in the dark myself and I know that sounds real doom and gloom but it's the truth you know I've I've lived opposite worlds I've been opposite places and I am a Gemini so it's kind of like a daily thing for me but <laughs> anyways moving on to the last one that she has in the book the law of gratitude number nine gratitude is a powerful law when put into practice, it changes your vibrational frequency and changes the frequencies of those around you. To practice gratitude, you must put forth great positive energy into the universe. It is your way of telling the universe that you are grateful for all blessings, big and small. It is your way of saying thank you when a favor appears, even if you, even if what you receive does not seem favorable. Anything that helps you gets, uh, gets you closer. I'm sorry, anything that helps you get closer to God can be considered a favor. 
We may not see it right away, but eventually it becomes as clear as the nose on our faces. Just with any other blessing that is bestowed upon us, material or otherwise, a simple thank you should suffice. Pause there. I constantly try to practice gratitude and not just because it's in this book like it really has opened my eyes to taking the time when it's quiet and you know when it's just me to say thank you to my gods thank you to the creator like I try to and, and thank you to people that you know I try to stop and practice gratitude because it goes a long way and it, I think it's part of our karma to be honest as well like it, how much do we stop and be grateful for things even though we might not get what we want we always get what we need all right I'll finish this out here through, uh, through the act of practicing gratitude we can already apply two of the greatest spiritual laws the law of attraction saying uh, staying in a state of gratitude will attract more things to be grateful for and the law of polarity we would not be able to practice gratitude unless we first had experienced the opposite. Judgment. Sorry, I forgot to pause my stuff. Somebody messaged me on Facebook. That's all right. Anyways, <laughs> and the law of polarity. We would not be able to practice gratitude unless we first had experienced the opposite. Judgment, criticism, and suffering. And acknowledging the greatness of all he created. Gratitude is surely a is surely a quicker way to get closer to God and receive ultimate blessings from the universe. So I really um, found this part of the book helpful. I've had this book for over a year. I finished the first one. I've almost finished this one. I'm horrible about getting books and like letting them stack up and reading bits and pieces out of them all over the place. But anyways, I'm trying to work on that. But this book is actually really, really great. Um... You know, like I said, the reason I'm doing this video is because we always hear about, you know, the law of attraction, this, that, and the other. Well, you know, there's more. And like I said, there's probably more than this. But if you can apply these things to your life, it does help. Um, I've tried to be mindful of what I've read here and practice them in my life. And even though I might not always have what I want, but I'll, I always have what I need and I, you know, I, I try to practice, practice these as much as possible. To me, it makes sense. Uh, I hope it kind of did to you too. Let me see if I can get the name of that other book of hers before I let you guys go. It's down here somewhere. Give me one moment. I don't know what happened to it. I might put it in the comments. Oh, there it is. So, The Happy Medium. Life Lessons from the Other Side. Great book. I really loved it. Like, I might even read it again. It's been a while. I probably read that book in three days or less. I got really into it one weekend when I had nothing else to do. But again, um, what I read today was from Kim Russo, Your Soul's Purpose, Learn How to Access the Light Within. I enjoy her material. I know everybody has different perspectives, um, you know, on things, and that's part of life. We're supposed to, so... This book might not be for everybody. That's okay. Um, I, do, I did rather enjoy it. So if you like this video, please let me know. Please like and subscribe. I really appreciate it. And until next time, love and light. Peace out, y'all.